So in this video, let's talk about how to best enter into SPSS multiple choice item type data. First, let's be clear about when to use multiple choice items. Imagine you have created the following question for your survey, and this is an extra example from a student research project. The student is asking, when you book hotel room for your holidays, which booking channels do you use? And then he offers three options, website of the hotel, travel agencies, and booking sites. Before we talk about how to enter data collected from such an item into SPSS, let's talk about whether this is a good item. My suggestion is, no, I would actually revise this survey question into Likert scale items. Two things I would want to change. One, I would change the U phrasing into an I phrasing. And secondly, I'll change the multiple choices into Likert scales. So instead of saying, when you book hotel rooms for your holidays, which booking channels do you use? I would say, when I book hotel rooms for my holidays, I tend to use the following booking channels. And then I will list out the different options, each with a Likert scale. In this way, not only do we collect data with more gradations and hopefully more accuracy, this also offers more possibilities in data analyses, and this eliminates potential complications and difficulties in entering multiple choice item data. Liquor scale is more straightforward to enter into SPSS, so in SPSS, this survey item will become three liquor scale variables, each representing one booking channel. I think that would be a much better way to phrase and code the data. All right, so this is the first point I want to make here. Before we actually use multiple choice questions for the survey, let's take a look at these questions and think about whether multiple choice is actually the best way to go. Because many times, it is actually better to convert multiple choice questions into liquor scale items. But there certainly are situations where multiple choice questions are needed. One of those situations may be this. For example, if I want to survey students and ask them which analytical method should be used to test the relation between age and salary, and then I offer four choices, t-test, correlation, chi-square, and standard deviation, obviously in this case, the only correct answer or the best answer is correlation. So how do we enter these data? So let's go to SPSS. We're going to create a new variable. Let's call it Q1 as in test question number one. It is going to be a nominal categorical measurement level. And it's got four options, so let's code the different options. One is the t-test, two is correlation, three would be chi-square, and four is a standard deviation. Okay, and now let me make up some random data. All right, so I have made up some uh, random data. Let's take a look at how we can analyze these data. If I want to find out how many people answer this question correctly, so how many people gave the correct answer of correlation, we can easily find that out by going to analyze descriptive and frequencies. So let's do that. Analyze, descriptive, and uh, frequencies. We throw in the variable and say OK. So we can see in the output table out of 60 people, 30 people gave the correct answer, correlation. So this is how we can code and enter multiple choice item data when the respondent is supposed to choose only one out of several multiple choices. Now let's take a look at an example where the respondents can choose more than one option from a list of multiple choices. Let's imagine another test question which asks which statistics can be used to measure central tendencies. The possible answers are mean, mode, median, and range, and clearly the first three are the correct answers. In this case, as we do expect that the respondents would choose multiple answers from the four possible answers, we should code the variables slightly differently from the previous example. For this question, we need to create four variables instead of just one. So each of the four multiple choice items will become a variable. So mean, mode, median, and range. We're going to code the values with 0 and 1. 0 is going to represent not selected, whereas 1 will represent selected. And once again, these are nominal measurement level. Now we can go back to data view and I will make up some data. All right, I made some things up. So to analyze these data, we can simply do a frequency on these variables, just like we did previously. So analyze, descriptives, frequencies, and we're going to choose these new variables. And in these output tables, we can see how many people chose each of the four answers. 
Another thing that we need to do sometimes is to see how many people gave exactly the right answer. In other words, we want to see how many people chose mean, mode, and median, but did not choose range. There are different ways to do it, but I am going to show what I consider to be an easy and straightforward way to achieve this. We're going to go to data and select cases. And we tell SPS as the criteria. We need mean, mode, and median to be selected, whereas range must be unselected. And then we can simply count the frequency on this new variable. We can see in the output table very straightforwardly that out of 60 people, 29 gave the right answer to this question. Now, there's one more thing I want to talk about, and that is the multiple response set. Sometimes people may be under the impression that if we're collecting multiple choice data, we must use multiple response sets to analyze the data. So let's take a look at how this works. So we go to analyze, multiple response, and we need to define the set. We're going to choose the four variables here, count one and give it a name, anything. Add it here and then close. Now that we have defined the multiple response set variable, we can run frequencies, for example. We go to analyze, multiple response and frequencies. And in the output table, we can see the frequencies on all the four variables. We can also use the multiple response set to run cross tabs. So analyze multiple responses, and here we have cross tabs. We can even go to custom table and use the multiple response set to run additional analyses. For example, we can ask for T and Z and also chi-square. But the thing that I want to mention here is that all these analysis by multiple response set, whether it is frequencies or cross tabs or the T and the Z and the chi-square, all these things, they can also be obtained through descriptive analyses manually. So if you're a bachelor student researcher who is not very experienced with multiple response set, well, you don't have to use it. Stick with the descriptive analyses that you have learned and practiced during education and just use them. You would still be able to get basically all the necessary outcomes through descriptive analysis as you would get from multiple response sets. All right, so finally, I'm going to end with a little bonus fact. Is it pronounced Likert or Likert scale? I always say Likert, but some of my colleagues say Likert scales. To clarify, it should be pronounced Likert, because the psychologist who invented the scale is actually a gentleman named Likert, and that is why I say Likert scale. All right, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Good luck with your research, and I'll see you next time.